I'm Robert Scoble, and we're uh, really thinking a lot at Rackspace about the personal cloud because we know that uh, little chips like this or wearables like this Google Glass are going to spit a lot of data into the air, and we're going to need to process that and store it and deal with it and fuse it and all that fun stuff. And I think it has a big impact on the future of Rackspace. But we have uh, the f the future of wireless here with the with the. Uh, CEO of Broadcom, and it, for those who don't know, Broadcom makes a lot of little chips inside your cell phones uh, that do all sorts of fun things. They showed me one of the first Wi-Fi radios that now is a little, little tiny piece of this uh, device that we're going to talk about right now. Who are you? I'm Scott McGregor. I'm the CEO of Broadcom. And you know, when I was a kid, I always loved gadgets. And one of the fun things now is that the wireless technology that companies like Broadcom are making are enabling probably the coolest gadgets uh, that we could possibly imagine. And there's going to be an explosion over the next five years. And we're excited to talk about today about how we're going to enable that to happen. So since Broadcom is not a consumer brand like a Nike or an Apple, a lot of people don't know how important Broadcom is and what you guys do. Broadcom is uh, not a consumer company. We sell business to business. Um, everybody who makes devices uh, in any quantity knows who we are. But just to give you an idea, Broadcom is uh, the company that enables the chips that provide uh, wireless information uh, for cell phones. We're in uh, most of the smartphones out there in terms of Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. If you get data in your home, Broadcom's number one for the last mile technologies of fiber and uh, uh, DSL and cable and satellite. Uh, and we also provide the internet backbone. So 99.98% of all internet traffic on the planet goes through Broadcom chips. And you also do the Raspberry Pi? <laughs> we have a chip that's in the Raspberry Pi. It's okay. the video processor and the uh, CPU, and uh, we've used that to get technology into the hands of experimenters. Yeah. And that's, uh, I think, a real interesting trend going forward. Well, and that's where we're going. There's this whole maker movement that I'm, I'm ta seeing just evolve really quickly because of crowdfunding. We just had the CEO of uh, Indiegogo here, mm -hmm. and uh, people are building all sorts of new hardware devices with chips inside, processors, a little bit of memory, some sensors. Um, and coming out with some really revolutionary devices. Plus the big companies like Google is trying to think about how are we gonna do a, a new kind of consumer electronics device, which we'll see if it's successful or not. I think it will be, because I, I mm -hmm. love this thing, but it still is a couple years before it really gets to where it does a lot, you know? <laughs> there's, a, there's an interesting phenomenon because cell phones are made in such high quantity, okay? There's what, 1.6 billion cell phones made this year, yeah. okay? Because that quantity is so high, it's justified the R&D to take a lot of technologies to miniaturize them and make them really low cost. Yeah. So because of that cell phone revolution, we can now take those same technologies and provide them now for things like Google Glass. You couldn't afford to do a custom chip, and it wouldn't make sense to spend, you know, we spent a billion dollars on wireless R&D last year, that wouldn't make sense for a small device. But now, uh, because the cell phone market enabled that, we can now make it available to uh, a lot of people creating these new kinds of wearables and uh, Internet of Things devices. And we should talk about the trends. Uh, when I was in high school, this cost a million dollars and took an entire room. Right. It was the Cray supercomputer that... And that, a power plant to run it. And a power plant to run <laughs> it. Um, you know, battery life is still not good on this, but it's, it's uh, running on a little tiny battery for almost all day. Um, but this, this gives me a little taste of where things Absolutely. are going, because this is still big. <laughs> compared so to our, job, our, job, our job as a device maker yeah. is to solve a couple things. One is form factor, make it really small. Yeah. Okay. Another is make it cheap, okay, because you, know, you wouldn't want it to cost a million dollars. Another is make it super low power. And it turns out all of those things are related because if you make it small, that correlates with cheap, it correlates with low power. So we're driving that down and, uh, you know, for example, this is a, a, a device and what we've done is it's, it's mostly coin battery, okay, but it's a, a coin battery and Bluetooth uh, and a little bit of extra technology in there. And what we've done is design this device to be something that you could embed in maybe a button for clothing. Yeah. Um, and it'd be a smart button. You could put some LEDs, you could put some sensors in there, and it runs on that coin battery for a year. Yeah. Okay, so in, it's in getting fact, down I, to low it, enough power. A startup is already building stuff. I, I have a Bluetooth emitter in here that's emitting, spraying my identifier. 
into the air. It's just a number. I'm Absolutely. Spraying it into the air. And as I get closer to one of these things, it, it could sense that, right? Absolutely. I think car keys, uh, yeah, I have a car key that has a radio thing in it too. Uh, well, this is the Bluetooth radio. I spoke at yeah. the Bluetooth forum, <laughs> you know, so I got a little advanced look at some of this world. But we're able to, this has a radio in it. Correct. Right? Correct. And it has a processor in it. It, it does. And it's so a full -on it's, it's an intelligent device that can speak to the internet. And, and it's running for an, a, a year on a coin battery that costs less than five dollars. Yeah. So the goal is to really enable people to build all kinds of new devices. So you got to make the electronics cheap. If you want to make a gadget that sells for fifty or hundred bucks or twenty-five bucks, you got to make the electronics cost you know a single digit yeah. uh, to be able to enable those kind of devices. Interesting. So we uh, we have. A processor, a, a Bluetooth radio. Now you could put a little Wi-Fi radio. So today, in there. today we made some announcements. We announced yeah. uh, uh, that we're working with Wi-Fi. Um, there's something called Wicked, which is uh, wireless internet connectivity for embedded uh, devices, uh, and something called Wi-Fi Direct. And we're integrating all those together. Wi-Fi Direct is really important because most Wi-Fi devices talk to uh, a, an application, of a base station, or an access point. Yeah, we have one over in by Rocky over Exactly. Here. But what I want to do is make it possible so this smart button I put on clothing communicates to your Google Glass okay, directly rather than going through an access point. So the devices can talk to themselves. Or this can talk directly to a TV set. Suppose you put a you know, button camera you know, like the old spy movies and stuff, button camera, direct Wi-Fi transmit to the nearest TV uh, that's a Wi-Fi based TV. So those kind of things, uh, you know, we want to enable that. Uh, and again, small form factor, low power, low cost. Have we decided on a term, an industry term for what this, because I've heard it called Internet of Things. I call it contextual computing because I think it includes this, but it, Contextual computing includes big data and mm -hmm. social data and location data, which doesn't necessarily have anything to do with, with the things. Well, I think since we have fragmentation of devices and categories, we should have fragmentation of what we call them. <laughs> so we'll have internet, I've heard internet of everything, internet of things, wearables, okay, yeah. uh, embedded consumer cloud. devices, personal cloud, context devices. Yeah. Uh, I, I think this is something where, you know, five years from now, it'll stabilize and we'll figure out what we call these. But yeah. I think the next five years are just going to be an explosion of people exploring what kind of devices they can build and what would you actually do with them. Today, most people just carry one device. You know, they carry a cell phone, an iPhone, right. or a, you know, something like this, Moto X, Moto X. Yeah. And that has seven sensors. It has a processor. It has a big battery. Uh, it has a big radio to talk to the cell tower and to Although the Wi-Fi Although compared to your, and, you know, years ago, that would have cost more than a million dollars. And yep. Would have taken two power plants, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true. What you guys have done to enable this kind of stuff is really remarkable. But where I'm going is right now we have one of these. On Correct. Us. Correct. I think it, by 2015, we're going to have maybe 100 sensors on us. We're going to have sensors for glucose and heart. I have a basis watch, right? right. And we're going to get an Apple watch soon. And we have the Nike Fuel Band. And we have Fitbit and Jawbone Up and on and on and on. Um, we're going to have lots of devices on us that we, we just wear on our wrist or, like you're saying, put in, into our clothes. You know, Scotty Vest is already thinking of this. You know? So think you of the cell phone as morphing into the personal gateway okay, on your body. Okay? And all these other devices, you will be accessorizing your personal phone okay, with sensors, with other things, with both input and output devices. So there's both sensing and there's also display. Uh, there's a lot of people doing artwork, and there's no reason your clothing shouldn't change color if you want it to yeah. or do other things. I mean, you can really get uh, interesting with all the devices you have. It should also continue to integrate a lot of the things you carry with you. A lot of people don't wear a watch anymore if they have a cell phone. They just look at their cell phone to see what time it is. It's sort of quaint that people still carry around pieces of metal carefully shaped to open locks. Yep. Okay, and I, mean, like I see these. you have several of those. And, <laughs> uh, you know, the anthropologist a thousand years ago, looking back at us today, they'd say, why do they carry all these separate things around? Yeah. So on one hand, you'll get an explosion of the number of things you have with you because of sensors and output devices, but also an implosion of all the stuff you carry around today that there's no reason for you to carry around credit cards, affinity cards, keys, even a wallet, I mean, that should all be integrated into you know, the device you have. You guys are in a competitive market. I mean, the Intel wants to be in this market, and Qualcomm wants to be in this market, and uh, uh, other companies, the Chinese want in on this market. 
what separates Broadcom from the other players? Broadcom uh, has a couple things going for it. One is um, we have a breadth of IP that none of the other companies have. So we have more of the different kinds of things. So we have NFC and Bluetooth and Wi-Fi and um, all kinds of video technology, processor technology, and it gives us this sort of Lego kit, if you will, to put all this stuff together. A lot of our competitors are more narrowly focused on things. Yeah. We also have uh, a tremendous scale. Uh, we make about two billion of these wireless connectivity devices a year. Okay, it's in pretty much every, every high-end smartphone. It's in uh, all kinds of consumer devices, TVs, tablets. Is, is that a CEO's um, way of saying you're gonna be able to compete on price? Well, we compete, <laughs> you have the, we compete on price you have when we have to, but you know, Robert, I'd rather compete on innovation. Yeah. Okay, what drives value you know, to our customers and you know, to our shareholders is when we do innovative stuff. Right. And so we've been able to create you know, some of our combo chips, taking all these different technologies and putting them in a single chip, driving the power down, you know, that's innovative. Some of the stuff we're doing with NFC, using it to pair all these technologies. I mean, why should you type web keys in? I mean, how archaic, right? Yeah. You should pair your devices by physically putting them together and they should exchange the necessary crypto keys. You don't do the whole ecosystem, like you don't do the eye sensor in this Google Glass or, or the, the three-axis gyroscope, do you? We okay. don't today. I mean, okay. we have to limit what we do a little bit. Yeah. Uh, we <laughs> probably have the broadest set of IP of any company in our space, but we have to limit. But it sounds like you want to be the hub where all that stuff is We want to do the communications. And, yeah. You know, there are other companies that talk about being the brain. Well, we want to be the nervous system. Okay, and provide that, that interconnect. And, uh, you know, the interconnect on the internet itself, I mean, we do the fiber optics, uh, communications chips and things like that, but all the way down to the, the tiniest, tiniest objects. Y you work a lot, I, I went and spoke to the Bluetooth world, you know, the Bluetooth guys um, over in China, and you probably work with the Wi-Fi guys and the Bluetooth, and you're always looking for the next protocol that is gonna be this nervous system. Today, when I get my phone and my Google Glass into my car, it, the car <laughs> fights over the two. <laughs> and so that tells me that there's a potential problem of handing off the right you know, thing at the right time to the right device, uh, particularly if you have 15 devices on you, right? I, I, do you sense that there is a problem in, in that area that you need there's to work There's an incredible problem there. And yeah. anybody who has a TV and a Blu-ray player and a set-top box and a Roku player and all those other things, you look at the number of remote controls that sit on your coffee table and, you know, let's see, I'm watching my Amazon Prime movie on the Bluetooth player or is it a uh, Blu-ray player or is it the TV set that's connected to the internet that I'm watching my movie on? You know, and, and which remote do I pick up and how do I do it? I think there's a, a, a challenge as we integrate these devices to create frameworks for how we understand them. So there's some consumer electronics protocols that are coming out now to handle some of that. But I, I think this is still early days uh, on that. And I think it's gonna get worse before it gets better because as you have the 100 sensors all made by 50 different companies, okay, expecting them to all be nice talking to each other could be a challenge. Yeah. But I think, uh, I think for the consumer, it'll get a little frustrating getting it all to work right. But that's an opportunity for both protocols um, and standards, which help, and also for companies who come and say, if you buy it all from us, we'll get it all right. Yeah. So there'll be some value added there. Interesting. So Apple's going to own me for a while, <laughs> even if well, it has Broadcom I mean, inside. There, there's a lot to be said for you know, companies like Apple or Samsung or others who make such a, uh, a large number of devices. And generally, they get them all to play nicely together. Yeah. Um, and when you mix and match, it's always going to be more of a challenge. So uh, let's talk about the next six months or going into South by Southwest. Mm -hmm. I'm going to the Consumer Electronics Show. I'm speaking to CEA, the, the group that puts on the Consumer Electronics Show in a, in a month. And at South by Southwest, I'm in interviewing the CEO of the, of, of the group that runs the CES show. Mm -hmm. What do you think I should be, what, what do you think is gonna be the discussion over the next six months? How, and how is this gonna change? Are, are we gonna see a lot more wearables come out of it? Well, we are, right? Same Absolutely. Just Absolutely. bringing out a watch, and app, Apple has a watch coming out, and Google probably next year is gonna announce this Google Glass. So. So right there, there's three new products I think the that character, I know of. I think the character of CES is going to change. And if you go to CES today, it's dominated by a small number of manufacturers. And, you know, there's two guys who make 50% of all the smartphones on the planet. Okay, and if you count the top 10 guys, they probably make 90% of all the smartphones on the planet. And that sort of volume and scale, uh, it'd be really hard to be a new smartphone maker today 
you know, to come in to, to get up to scale on that. Yeah. And you know, it really dominates the themes at, at CES. Ditto for some of the large computer players. You know, it'd be really hard to be a new computer maker today. Um, I think what's going to be different is that for wearables, I think the big guys are going to make wearables, and they've already announced plans to do it. Some are announcing, you know, in the next month or so. But what you're going to see is that because we've driven the form factor and price down, you're going to see little guys able to make wearables. And you go look at Kickstarter, for example, and you t search for wearable. There's like 40 devices that show yeah. up. Uh, I think because small companies can make wearables, some of them are going to have viral runaway hits. And I don't know whether it's fitness trackers for dogs or whether it's you know cooking thermometers or or clothing that changes color when your friends are near. I, you know, we'll, we'll experiment with this. But I think CES is going to really sort of blossom and it's going to be more let a thousand flowers bloom than the very dominant, just the dominant players you have. They're not going to go away, but you're going to see a lot more other guys come up. And I think if you're a small company right now, there's a chance to innovate where you've been locked out. I mean, if you're an innovator today and you said, ah, I'm going to make a new smartphone, Good luck getting that funded. I, I met a girl in the uh, UK who uh, built a, a, a dog tag for mm -hmm. a dog, mm -hmm. talked about dog tags, mm -hmm. for, and she her company uh, cost less than $10,000 to Correct. build, which you can put on a credit card. You know? yeah. um, so that shows you the cost of creating one of these companies has come way down, and now with Kickstarter you can get funded and create you know, millions of dollars of value pretty, pretty quickly if you have something that people want. You know, and they didn't know they wanted it until you put it on Kickstarter or, or Indiegogo, like we inter interviewed. Before. But the nice, the nice thing is, you know, y you don't just like try. Most people don't. I mean, we, you and I probably do. We try a new smartphone just because it's fun or it's given to us or something like that. Because you can talk to it. Talk to it. <laughs> but but for, most, for, for most people, the cost of having another smartphone just because they want to play with it is not realistic. No. $600 okay. per smartphone. It's, 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 it's not realistic it, for it's me. It's too expensive. But yeah. if you can spend twenty nine ninety five for some cool internet connected gadget you get or you know you have a weather station that's connected to the internet that puts your temperature, you know, on uh, yeah. your house's temperature on the internet or turns things off in your house and you know it costs Twenty, thirty, fifty dollars. You know, these are things people are just going to impulse try. Yeah. And you know, some of them are going to, you know, be left uh, beside. You know, you won't use it for more than a couple of weeks, and oh well, you're out thirty bucks. Okay. But it's going to really enable experimentation. Yeah. And really enable people to make very niche, purpose-built devices for very specific things. You know, like, uh, you know, you're going to have the the Burning Man device that works for this season. Yeah. Okay, and you know, and you put it next to the you know Woodstock buttons or something like that after you're done with it, you know, uh, and and it's okay because yeah. it, it, it didn't cost a fortune, you know, it, it's this big, it you know, it's fun. Yeah. Um, These it, things at, at volume of a few thousand probably yeah. cost less than ten dollars. Yeah, you get things down. You know, the electronics costs would be in, in that range. Wow. But you know, you go to you go to a, a, a music concert or something like that, and you get these cool LED lights that flash and stuff like that, and you know, when the battery runs out, you throw it away, right? Yeah. Okay, well, you know, that's a million dollars worth of electronics, you know, a number of years ago. Now it's disposable. And so I think you'll get things all the way down into the disposable range and into the give it a try range. And I think that's going to foster so much innovation uh, in the next five years. I do. I agree too. Uh, it's fun talking to you because you guys are building the building blocks of this new age that's coming. So. Thanks for what you're doing and what your company's doing. Thanks um, for talking to us today, and uh, please encourage those innovators. I know you're doing a lot of things in that area. I try. <laughs> and, uh, but, but, you know, it, it's, it's some smart person who Thanks. thinks of some clever idea, okay, and because they can now build it and charge it on their credit card to start their company as opposed to having to go through the traditional VC funding and private equity funding, I think that's going to really change the kind of stuff we see. Yeah, GoPro was started with a few thousand dollars in his mom's sewing machine, so it's a great story. Good. And that was 10 years old. Now, now you could do it even cheaper. So Good. Hey, thanks. Thank you so much. All right.